Andrew's new captain is Sir John Simon. So to him falls the task of driving off first on medal day. And when a new captain drives, they fire a gun, but not in the direction of the captain. The caddy who retrieves that first drive gets the captain's congratulations and a golden sovereign. Who wouldn't be a caddy at St Andrews? Stand back, you can't have it. Political bigwigs make for the coast to enjoy a little fresh air and a lot of powwow. Along the front, our Cameron meets Lord Ebisham, closely followed by Mr. Douglas Hacking. But the high spot of the conference is the speech by Sir Samuel Hoare. Fresh from his tour of our Mediterranean forces, the first sea lord puts up a vigorous defense of Britain's rearmament policy. He claims that the international situation is getting worse and that the one factor to ensure world peace is a powerful British empire. In this instance, armaments don't lead to war. They ensure peace. Apparently, market is a good place for conferences. This one is on the food question. London loses another of its old landmarks with the passing of Charing Cross Pier, which for many years has been the headquarters of the Thames fire floats. River piers look so solid that the sight of one floating downstream is enough to make even a sober man wonder where he spent the last half hour. At the old Hans church, the rector holds a toy service, and a whole crowd of children go along to take part, including little Audrey. You may have heard about her. All the children were hoping that the toys would be given away after the service. But little Audrey laughed and laughed because she knew they were all going to the hospital. Once again, storm, torrential rain and flood strike the United States. And this time it's Texas that takes the full force of nature's fury. At San Angelo, the Concho River runs them up. 1,500 are homeless and there's half a million damage. And when the waters subside and the sun comes out, it shines down on desolate scenes of destruction. Airport, the first complete fleet of British airplanes to be built for service in Canada is christened by Lady Shelmadine, wife of the Director General of Civil Aviation. I think you the day of St. George. Then Lady Shelmadine makes the first flight in one of the machines that will link the main Canadian cities with passenger and freight services. Surely this order from a dominion to the home country is a tribute to the world prestige of our aircraft industry. <laughs> 